Hey guys, I'm going to be going over some more things you can do with React Router Native. The first thing I want to show you is passing data between pages. So it's very common to want to be able to send from, for example, our home page. And uh, this is a route. And whenever I go to the products page, maybe I want to pass it some information. And the reason you might want to do this is because from some pages, you might want to send different data. So I'm going to show you two ways you can do this. The first is through a URL parameter. And this is really more relevant for when you're doing through the browser. But you can do, for example, maybe the name. So if you put a colon, like I just did here, and then a, uh, a value, so for example, name, you now have a variable in the URL. So when I push over here, slash Bob, instead of it's going to match this path right here so slash products slash name and what it's going to do is it's going to store whatever you put here in a variable called name and I'll show you what I mean by that so one of the things that react router gives us is also a thing called match and if we wanted to we could actually just show you what that is so I'm just going to JSON stringify the match object. And I'm now going to change pages. So one of the parameters you can see, or one of the things it has is something called parameters, and inside of that is name Bob. We'll talk about that in a second, but that's what I was talking about with matching parameters and grabbing data from the URL. So there's some other things you might be interested in here um, inside of match that you can use. But like I said, we care about the params, so I'm gonna just show that. So we have name is Bob. So what I could do is I could do dot name and we would get Bob here. All right, so we have Bob. And the reason for that is because uh, we pass that as a parameter here. So if I put, instead of Bob, I said Tom, uh, we would now see Tom there. So whatever I put at the end of the URL, that's gonna be passed to that component. And um, it's called name because we put the name here. So params.name. If I were to call this, for example, um, you could call this whatever you wanted. So I could give it, call it first name. So then in products over here, I would do match.params.first name. So that's those two names match up. So we have Tom here. But uh, this is not really a great way to pass data at least a lot of data or like sometimes you might want to pass an object uh, so there's other ways you can do this but this is a nice way really for if you're using the web browser and you want to use react router and you want to store like maybe an ID of a product or something the other way you can do this and we'll just get rid of this is when you push there's a second parameter um, and this is basically the state so I can add anything I want here so uh, value value one is going to be Bob val two is going to be five and I can store whatever I want so the second one is just an object over here and the way I access this and I'm just going to get rid of the end there is in products there's another thing called location and we get location and match again uh, the reason we have access to those is because we have uh, it as a route so we pass products as a component okay so we have location and if I wanted to I could show that here so we can take a look at what location has so it has again some other things that uh, you can use so path name search but the thing we care about is the state so let's click on that so it has Bob and Val 5 so whatever I pass now um, and that object we can access on this screen through location state. So if I were to change these values, and this is going to be a really big number now, um, we would see those values reflect and change in our products. And we could do different things uh, with this now. So that's how you can pass data between pages and then actually receive that data and do something with it. Is So just to recap, you pass it through history.push 
um, when you go to that page and you can change whatever data you pass to it and then on the page uh, you get it through the location. So that's the main way you really want to be passing data especially if it's an object especially in React Native when you don't really have a URL. Okay the next thing I wanted to go over was uh, a lot of times you'll create components that need to use a React Router. So an example Let's say I want to create a new one called change page button. And uh, instead of rendering on the home page here a button, I'd like to render my change page button. And let's just say I return a button and that's that's what this does. So a mistake I see a lot of people do is this. So I'm going to render my change page button. So I have my change page button here. And in my change page button, notice I'm getting history from the props. Um, and then we change to the products page. So it's basically the exact same code, except now I changed it. So this button is a different component. All right, so let's run it. Oh, we get a problem. Undefined is not an object evaluating history.push. And the reason for that is history is actually not in the props. Uh, it is not a route, it's just a random component that we have here, so history is not there. So we can solve this by doing one of two things. First, we could just pass history down. So we're getting the history prop because home is a route, so we could pass history to our change page button. And so now in our change page button we have history, and I can now change page is no problem. But sometimes it might be uh, nested quite deep. For example, maybe change page over here um, calls another component that then needs it. Uh, the alternative way, and we'll get rid of that, is you don't have to use any of these things. As long as this component is being rendered inside of a route, you can do this. So I'm going to say const change page button. And we're going to export this change page button and we're going to use a higher order component called with router and this comes from the uh, library so a react router native with router and what that does is it actually adds history to the props and also location and match and all the good stuff that um, basically react router gives you Okay, so I can, for example, look at this. So we have not passed in the props, and if I click on this, we're able to change pages just fine. So that is the other way you can basically inject or uh, have access to these React Router props is through adding this with router higher order component. So that's it for this video. That should give you a good footing on how to use React Router, how to set up screens, send data between the two pages, um, and then also be able to access these props from any component now. Uh, again, this code will be up on GitHub if you want to check it out, and the link will be in the description below. Thanks for watching.